Making your own textures is something of an underappreciated skill. After all, there's loads of excellent free textures on sites like Ambient CG, many of them I use myself, so in most cases you probably don't actually need to make your own. But if you've got a project that demands something very specific and you can't find anything pre-made, it can be a helpful tool to have on your belt. Now, this isn't going to be a tutorial on making textures for a full PBR texture setup, although I can make one of those if you really want me to. This is just a basic tiling texture that you can use as part of your material nodes. I'm doing a classic geometric sci-fi-ish pattern, the one you saw in the clip at the beginning, to use as a height map, but this technique really works with anything you can think of. I'm drawing it all out in Photoshop, but of course any decent image editing software will do the trick. I know what you're thinking at this point, that's going to look terrible when you tile it with the blank space on the outside. So here's where the trick comes in. I picked this up from a friend who designs greeting cards. Duplicate what you've got until there's four copies of your image, then move them all so they're centered on the four corners of your canvas. Finally, add in details to the middle so it doesn't look so odd. The more detailed you get and the more irregular the details, the less obvious the tiling will be. But I wanted to keep this nice and simple for demonstration purposes. I did make a mistake right here though, I should not have drawn all the way to the edge of the canvas. You don't actually notice it very much in the final result, but the fact that we avoid drawing to the edge is what makes the tiling work. Now, when you plop that texture onto a plane and adjust the scale, it tiles seamlessly. The biggest giveaway here is the big rectangle with the thick borders I drew, but I didn't have to do that. The tiling is even less obvious if you do an organic pattern, but again, nice and simple. I use a bump node to convert this into normals, which looks pretty cool when you view it at a more extreme angle. I'll time lapse through the creation of the rest of the scene. Down in the description is a link to my Gumroad with some hand-drawn example textures, including the one I used for this. All free, of course, and you can use them for anything you like. They're all black and white, so I personally recommend using them for bump maps, but hey, I'm not your mom. With the power of color ramps, anything is possible. These are also fun when used as emission alphas, or as the factor in a mix shader node to add a metallic texture to the inside of grooves. I had a lot of fun making these. I did digital painting for years before I ever picked up Blender, so being able to draw decently well does give me a bit of an edge with these. But as you can see, even really simple designs can have a pretty cool end result. The best use for this technique, in my opinion, is anything that needs to look like it was done by hand. So engravings on a monument, a textile pattern, or even just on general surfaces if you want your render to have a hand-painted stylized look. That's gonna do it for this video, so thank you everybody so much for watching. If you enjoyed, let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you guys later. Bye!